Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to talk to you about integrating double integrals and polar coordinates, so not with x's and y's, but rather with r's and thetas. Remember, the idea with r is that r is how far out from the pole or the origin that we are, and theta is our standard rotation around from standard form counterclockwise. So if we look at this sector that I have of some circle, and I look at this piece of this sector out here, so this is going to be actually what we consider a box in polar form. It's a little piece of the grid on our radar, right, from polar coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and think of this as some amount of area like we did before whenever we set up double integrals in x and y and rectangular coordinates. So here I have a piece of area. It's my box in polar. And I'm going to go ahead and sort of slice through the very center of my box and say the middle distance in this box from the origin or from the pole, we're going to call that r. Okay, so that means that if you think about this direction going in and out, then basically Basically, that's going to be some change in radius. I'm going to have a farther radius out here and I'm going to have a closer radius than my radius through the center of my box here. So we're going to call that some change in R. That's going to be the dimension of that box that direction. I'm going to go ahead and label these one radius farther out and one radius farther in than the center of my box. I'm going to call one R plus and one R minus. So this one's farther away and this one's closer than my radius through the center. And so then obviously our delta r, this distance is going to be this big radius minus the small radius. So it'll be subtracting r plus and r minus. And then obviously the width of this, if you remember from doing single variable polar integrals, we're going to think of that as just that amount. Now if I want to figure out the area of my polar box, I can start doing that. So think about the area of my polar box is going to be part of a circle with this outside radius, right? So think about r plus, we have a circle with that radius, that's a piece of it, okay? So it's going to be some part of pi r plus squared. Well, what part of it will it be? Well, it'll be this much of it out of 2 pi, right? So delta theta out of 2 pi will be how much of the circle this entire pizza slice is here. So we'll go ahead and write that inside. That would be the area for the entire pizza slice. Now what we'll need to do is subtract out the area of this inner smaller pizza slice that isn't in my polar box that I don't want. So I would need to subtract out a piece of the circle that has radius r minus with the same delta theta width. So we are basically taking the big pizza slice here and we're subtracting out the area of the smaller inside pizza slice and that's going to give us the area of our polar box. Now we can go ahead and do some reducing here. You'll notice the pies will reduce in each of these and each of these have a one half. So I can reduce the pies and pull out the one half. I also have a delta theta in each of these. So if I pull out one half and delta theta in common, then I'm just left with my big radius squared minus my little radius squared. And if you look at this, you might notice if you squint at it for a second that this is actually a difference of squares. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and factor this as a difference of squares, this piece here, and it's going to actually help us get a formula for our box, our polar area here. So if I factor this, think about as a difference of squares, that would be my big radius plus my small radius times my big radius minus my small radius. Now we have a great formula here, we just need to know how to see it. So first thing I notice is this last thing, r plus minus r minus. That happened to be, if we looked at the very beginning, that was our delta r, right? So this piece of the formula here is going to be delta r. I already have a one-half delta theta out here. So the question is, what is this r plus plus this r minus? Well, if I think of this and maybe combining it with the one-half, I'm adding two things and then multiplying by a half, or I'm adding two things and then dividing by two, and that's called the average of those two things. And if I average the far radius and the close radius, that's going to give me the halfway point, which is actually just going to be my original radius through the center of the box, right? So I get an r from these, I have a delta theta, and I have a delta r. So our area formula for our polar box is going to be r times delta r times delta theta. The same thing is going to be true in polar. If we cram more and more of these polar boxes into our little region to approximate the area, they're going to get smaller and smaller. And as the number of polar boxes approaches infinity, the area is going to get really small, infinitesimal. So this delta A becomes the idea of dA, and our R delta R delta theta is going to give us the formula R dR d theta. So when we are using a double integral in polar coordinates, 
when we tack on the end normally in rectangular coordinates, a dx dy or a dy dx, what we need to do to tack on a unit of area in polar coordinates to integrate correctly and find area, we need to actually tack on r dr d theta. Okay, so you'll notice we have an extra r, not just dr d theta, but r times dr d theta. So we'll have an extra r added in there as our unit of area in polar. Okay, so up here in the corner, I'm going to go ahead and leave our polar unit of area. I've got some of our polar conversions as well, in case it's been a while since you've done some polar. So remember, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and x is r times cosine theta, and y is r times sine theta, in case we need to use any of those to convert. Let's just go ahead and look at an integral that's already set up for us in polar. So we want to evaluate the double integral over the region, and our function in the double integral is 1 minus r squared dA, and our region, they're telling us, is the upper half of the unit circle. So you think about, this is my region R here. Upper half of the unit circle means the radius is 1, so this is 1 here. And what we need to do is first input our dA, so it's not dx dy anymore, it is r dr d theta. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate the double integral of 1 minus r squared. And putting our polar unit of area, we will have r dr d theta. Now, we will use the same methodology that we used when we integrated dx dy or dy dx, but the directions will be a bit different when we think in terms of r and theta. Remember, the methodology is to fix the outer variable and draw through in the inner variable direction. So what we'll need to do is choose some theta. So I need to choose some direction. I'll just say this direction. I'm going to go that way. And I need to draw through space in the increasing r direction. So increasing r direction would start at the pole and it would go out from the pole. So I'm drawing on a particular direction, a particular theta, outward in the r direction. Where am I in the region? Well, I'm in the region starting at the pole, starting at the origin, so that's going to be at r equals zero. And where do I leave the region? Well, at this r value. What r value is that? Well, I'm on the unit circle at that point, and that is when r equals 1 we know. So my bounds for r are from 0 to 1. Now I think about what are my smallest and largest values for theta. I need constants for my outer bounds here. So what is the smallest value for theta? Well, this is when theta equals 0 over here. And this over here is the largest value. That's when theta is equal to pi, right? So we have from 0 to pi and that will be our bounds for theta. So theta equals zero, and theta equals pi. Now you'll notice here we have an additional r, so when we go ahead and evaluate this from zero to pi, and then from zero to one, I think we'll want to go ahead and distribute our r first and go ahead and integrate r minus r cubed. Remember that extra r came from the polar unit of area r d r d theta, so you're always going to have that extra r if you're writing d a in for polar. Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate this. This is not so bad, so we'll keep our integral from 0 to pi, and if we do the antiderivative with respect to r, then we will get 1 half r squared minus 1 fourth r to the 4, plugging in bounds 0 to 1. And then we'll deal with the d theta after that. So if we plug in our bounds, we will get 1 half times 1 and minus 1 fourth times 1. So we'll get 1 half minus 1 fourth. And then plugging in 0, we'll get 0 minus 0. So we just get 0 for the second half of plugging in our bounds. And we'll integrate that d theta. Let's go ahead and clean that up. That's pretty easy. We need to just simplify a half minus a fourth, so we'll go ahead and say a fourth. You can go ahead and bump it out or keep it in. We'll just keep it in. So we're integrating one fourth d theta. If we're treating theta as the variable, then that becomes one fourth theta. And we're evaluating that from zero to pi. And if I plug in pi and zero, so I get one fourth pi minus one-fourth times zero would be zero, so this one is going to give us an answer of pi over four for this integral. Okay, looking, we want to find now the volume between the paraboloids z equals four minus x squared minus y squared and the xy plane. So remember how we'll find the volume using a double integral. We will set up a double integral. We'll figure out our bounds based on our region. 
but then we'll need the height function, which would be this top surface. And our top surface here is four minus x squared minus y squared. Now the problem is, if I am integrating this r dr d theta, let's say, now I can't just put four minus x squared minus y squared in my integral here because I really need things in terms of r and theta if we're doing things in polar. So I need to think about what is four minus x squared minus y squared in terms of r's and thetas. If we see four minus x squared minus y squared as four minus the quantity x squared plus y squared, now we can probably get an idea that this really needs to be thought of as four minus r squared. So instead of writing it in as z equals this, we're going to write it in as z equals four minus r squared. Now thinking about the shape of our region, our region, the base of this is going to be a circle, right? What will the base be? How large of a circle? What will the radius be? Well, you might be able to tell by looking at this or this. Let's go ahead and look at this. If I'm in the xy plane, then that means z is zero. So I would set this thing equal to zero and then moving this over or just kind of looking at it, you might see that the radius is two, right? So basically we have a radius of two here. For our region, we have a circle. So now think about what we need to do. We need to choose some theta and draw through in the r direction. So if I start at the pole here and I just pick some theta and I draw through in the r direction, my smallest r value is at the pole, that's at zero, and the biggest r value I have for the base is on the edge of the circle, and that's when the radius is two. So we'll be integrating from zero to two. And then for theta, I want the entire paraboloid, right, all the way around. So I need to go all the way around the circle every direction, which will be from zero to two pi. Okay, so that's our integral for our volume. Now, just like we did last time, Notice we have an extra r here, and I think we want to go ahead and distribute that into our height function. So we're going to go ahead and integrate instead 4r minus r cubed dr d theta. All right, let's give ourselves some room to do this. So we'll leave the integral from 0 to 2 pi alone, and integrating 4r minus r cubed dr, we'll get r squared divided by 2, that will give us 2r squared, minus r to the 4 divided by 4, so we'll get 1 fourth r to the 4, and our bounds are 0 to 2, and we'll do the d theta after we plug in these bounds. So we'll get the antiderivative from 0 to 2 pi. Plugging in our bounds though, we get 2 times 2 squared, so that would be 8, minus 1 fourth 2 to the 4, 2 to the 4 would be 16, and 1 fourth of 16 is going to be 4. So we get 8 minus 4 minus, if we plug in 0, each of these are going to be 0. And so we'll have to integrate our result here, d theta. Now let's go ahead and do 8 minus 4. So we'll go ahead and say we're integrating just 4 d theta. And if we integrate 4 d theta, then we will get 4 theta and our bounds are 0 to 2 pi, and you can probably see pretty quickly when we plug in 2 pi, 4 times 2 pi will give us 8 pi, and 4 times 0 is going to give us 0, so minus 0. Our volume for this piece of the solid that is between the paraboloid and the xy plane is 8 pi. Okay, for our last example here, we want to find the volume between the cone, z equals 9 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared, and the plane z equals 5. So let's, let's look at our region first here, I think, and see why this is certainly a good candidate for using polar coordinates and not just follow this method blindly. Think about the region. So I have a top surface here, the cone, and I have a bottom surface, the plane. And where they intersect, the shadow that that intersection casts on the xy plane is going to be my region. I think you can see that the shape of their intersection is going to be a circle centered at the origin, right? So this is our region in the plane here. And if you just sort of look at that region straight on, of course you can see it's a circle. So we'll have to figure out what is the radius of our region and then we'll go ahead and break this down. But now volume between a cone and a plane, so I have a top surface and a bottom surface, Remember, with double integrals, 
when you're doing a double integral and you have something that is an object between two planes and that bottom plane is not the xy plane, z equals 5 is not the xy plane, then remember you'll need to do top minus bottom and integrate that as your height function. And we can tell since the region is round, when we have a circular region, that's a great candidate for polar coordinates. So we're going to go ahead and throw our polar unit of area in there, r d r d theta. What we'll need to do is figure out our top and our bottom functions in terms of r and theta, though. So if we think about our top one, which is going to be the cone here, uh, that's 9 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Well, x squared plus y squared is r squared, so the square root of that is just going to be r. So our top is actually going to be written in polar as z equals 9 minus r. And then our bottom function, there's not really anything to change into polar, right? It's just z equals 5, and that's that. And there's nothing really to do with that at this point in time. So that is what we need. So we'll go ahead and say that our volume is equal to our double integral. And then we'll say we have 9 minus r as our top, minus 5 as our bottom, r dr d theta. And now looking at our region, we will find our bounds. So we find r first, so we fix some theta and draw through in the r direction. So let's just say I pick this direction going up into the first quadrant. So if I start drawing through in the r direction, then I'm going to start at the pole, and that's r equals 0. And I'm going to come out whatever this radius is on the circle. So I'll need to figure out what is the radius of my circle. Well, how do I do that? Well, let's see. That's going to be when these things are equal to each other, right? It casts that shadow in the plane from this circular region here. So when is 9 minus r equal to 5? I think we're going to have that the radius needs to be 4 for this intersection, right? So our shadow has a radius of 4, so we'll be from r equals 0 here to r equals 4 out here. Those will be our r bounds. And then if I want the entire thing all the way around, then I need to go all the way from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify our integral. We'll say from 0 to 2 pi, and inside we'll say from 0 to 4, and 9 minus r minus 5. And then I also have an r, right? So we'll have 9 minus 5 is going to give us 4 minus r. But then we also have r dr d theta, right? So integrating this, what we'll really actually want to do is from 0 to 2 pi and from 0 to 4, we'll want to integrate 4r minus r squared dr d theta, distributing our r. Okay, let's go ahead and do our inside integral here, integrating dr. So we'll leave our 0 to 2 pi on the outside. And integrating dr, we would get r squared over 2 there, so that would become a 2r squared minus, that would become an r cubed over 3, so we'll get 1 third r cubed. And we'll plug in our bounds from 0 to 4, and then after all this we'll deal with the theta stuff. So moving back down here, I still have my outer integral 0 to 2 pi, and plugging in my 4, I would get 2 times 4 squared, that's going to be 32, minus 1 third, 4 cubed, 4 cubed is 64, so that's minus 64 over 3, minus plugging in 0, I'd get 0 here and here, so minus 0. Okay, so we will be integrating from 0 to 2 pi. Now looking over here, this is 96 over 3. If you multiply and get a common denominator, so we'll be actually integrating 96 minus 64 would give us 32 over 3. We'll be integrating that d theta. And so if we integrate that, we will just get 32 over 3 times theta. And our bounds are 0 to 2 pi. And so then plugging in our bounds, we will get 32 over 3 times 2 pi. That will be 64 pi over 3. Minus, if I plug in 0, I'll get 0. So our answer for the volume between these two surfaces, the cone and the plane, is 64 pi over 3. 
Okay everyone, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to convert to polar and look at your regions and think in terms of r's and thetas instead of x's and y's. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.